Good morning and welcome to the first Sunday in Lent here at St. Michael's Episcopal Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. 
And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Blessed be God who forgives all our sins. It is the dead of winter. It's less than two months after a murderous political riot desecrated the nation's capital and assaulted our hearts and our minds it's cold and rainy all the time. We've been in a pandemic for a year with a half a million Americans dead from it. And we can't even go to church. And now it's Lent. So how are you feeling? Is happy the word? Are you happy? Do you want to be happy? Can you be happy? Should we want or even try to be happy? The Declaration of independence says we have an inalienable right from our Creator to pursue happiness. But maybe it's wrong. Maybe Thomas Jefferson didn't know what he was talking about. He didn't believe in God. He was a rationalist, a political philosopher detached from biblical warrant or theological respect and he was a slaver why is he talking about inalienable rights to pursue happiness so maybe our creator has not endowed us with inalienable rights maybe we were not meant to be happy maybe this life in which suffering estrangement, disappointment, dejection, and loss are everywhere around us. Maybe we were created to be sad. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. There is nothing new under the sun, says the scripture in one place. But you know I don't believe all that. Sure, we were born to cry. But we were also born to laugh. Born to love. Born to sing. Born to draw and color and write and build and invent and exchange and trade and grow. Born to play games and play the guitar and and even go dancing. It's true now. Sin and death are part of the systemic slavery into which we were all born after the fall. And they have perverted our relationship to things 
and desires and made us greedy and idolatrous in ways we are in denial about at the deepest level of who we are. Sin and death make us hate out of fear and jealousy. Our own brothers make us tell lies about our sisters, make us disrespect our parents, make us covet what our neighbors have, make us put ourselves in the place of God, make us make up stories about who we are that just aren't true. At the expense of, well, anybody else. Yes, sin and death, they are with us and are bent on bending us out of shape into beings left with nothing but the crying. Because the devil doesn't love us. And all he does is make us think nonsense is true so that we will fall. But the vision of God for us is a life of happiness. That is what God intended before the fall. We were born to be happy, to take delight in the true, good, wonderful pleasures of God-given living, not gluttony and self-gratification, but the humble joys of godly living. When that baby girl sees mommy and smiles and mommy cries for joy, that's happiness. When you work hard on some virtuous enterprise that serves not only your ego, but your wholeness and the wholeness of those around you, that's happiness. And that's God's gracious power happening in and through and to you. Some of us, through no fault, But indeed, through the brokenness of the physical world, some of us suffer from mental, emotional, and all sorts of illness. To be sure, these are not matters of guilt or blame or anything, but but only care and love and science and healers, and treatment, and mercy. I have known this hell in my family, and I'm sure you have too. But it was the intention of God that in creation we were designed for joy. The creation is fallen. And indeed, we are very often bent quite far from our intended shape. Sometimes we bend ourselves and always the world around us is banging on us. But the one who in joy designed us for love, God, is calling us to Him, to listen to Him, to seek Him, and to seek the same love for others as ourselves. The love between us will be the force that bends us back into shape. That's the love of God in Christ. 
to set us free to be what we were indeed meant to be. Amen. In peace, I bid the prayers of this people for the cares and concerns of the church and the world and for all people in their daily life and work, for those endangered by war, for our enemies and ourselves, that all people might respond to your love and open their hearts to reconciliation. And for this community, the nation, and the world, for the just and proper use of your creation, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, especially those affected by COVID-19. We pray for the Episcopal Farm Worker Ministry in Newton Grove, and the members of that community who struggle during this difficult time. May they find hope. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We pray for all who have died, especially Elizabeth Matthew and those who have died during this pandemic alone and afraid, and those who died in war, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.